Hello and welcome to the first Traxxas Success Story webinar series. In this series, we will focus on American food manufacturer Bush Brothers and their experience with manufacturing execution software Traxxas. Joining me today, we have... Hello, my name is Mike Yost. I am the president of Mesa International. Mesa is a 24-year-old not-for-profit industry association that's focused on finding the business value at the intersection of where manufacturing meets IT. Hello, my name is Dave Ray. I'm the Vice President for Operations here at Parsec Automation. We are the supplier for Traxxas, a leading operations management and manufacturing execution software. Hello, my name is Travis Tomaszewski. I'm an Operations Area Manager at Bush Brothers & Company. Uh, we are a producer of baked beans, and we have been using the Traxxas software for about five years now. And I am Catherine Gutierrez, Director of Client and Partner Relations here at Parsec. Mike, I'd love to start with you and ask, what types of challenges does an organization typically face before looking for a software solution specific to manufacturing operations? Well, manufacturers face many challenges, uh, environmental, marketplace, competitive pressures, quality and cost, et cetera. What manufacturing does can impact the company's brand at the highest level, so it's important to get it right. All these pressures mount on companies to the point where they know they need to do something and that's when we see them start to look for some sort of technology solution. Particularly strong drivers are compliance related drivers, whether they're coming internally or externally or come from regulatory bodies. Uh, compliance demands typically involve companies documenting and providing proof that they have control over their production operations and their final output. So implicit or explicit in those demands is often the need for IT based systems. And Mike, when they start looking, do they typically go internally or do they look to a vendor for a solution? Well, that really varies by company, uh, but manufacturers and engineers are problem solvers by nature and historically they've uh, looked to solve those problems themselves. So you'll see our marketplace is a very fragmented marketplace and that's because companies historically have tried to build their own solutions uh, themselves. But those companies will often hit a point where they have issues with scalability or supportability and they find themselves beholden to the systems that they've built. And that's when they have to ask themselves if they want to be a software company or if they want to partner with one so that they can be the best food producer or auto company or electronics manufacturer that they can be. That's when people typically choose to engage a vendor or to partner with, with someone. And I would add that we have seen a shift in recent years as our marketplace has evolved and manufacturers have come to expect that there's a set of solution providers with proven capabilities out there. And people are more likely than they have been in the past to look for a vendor first before simply jumping in and building their own offering. That's some really great feedback. Travis, I'd love to get your perspective from a client's view. What prompted you to first implement a software solution? Yeah, when we, we first started, obviously we had a lot of downtime. We had things that were causing significant costs to the business. Um, and we, so at that time we started printing downtime sheets and deciding to go manual recording for all the downtime. And that was relying on operators to document every event that occurred. Um, there was limited root cause. We, we couldn't get down to the root cause that we wanted to be able to uh, get to. And there was lots of other downtimes, but there was, there was really no indication on how we could improve the line uh, because it was all due to the operator documenting things here and there as they saw fit. So we converted from printed downtime sheets to more of a spreadsheet, which was still manual entry, but there was some reporting capabilities. That was an Excel sheet, and it was still reliant on the operators to, to input all of that data. So obviously there's challenges with those. There's manual, manual collection and manual research. The operator had to interpret every piece of downtime that we had, and everything was a minute. Operators would back themselves into the numbers instead of watching the line we would not have any way to capture any notes from the operators. It was pure numbers on a sheet that we really couldn't get a lot of information out of. Also with those solutions, there was no reporting capability. So we wanted to get the reporting to be able to have insight into our operation and know what was causing the issues that we were having. And that's a good point. You know, were there financial factors to consider when choosing a homegrown solution versus an offering from a vendor? There were, there were financial factors, definitely, um, and at the time, we really didn't look too much outside of ourselves. We decided to go with more of a, a access database, which is Illuminator software, and the problem with that 
the big, the big financial risk we had was we had to put all of that effort in with our own IT support. So those, t those resources were tied up. They were unable to work in other parts of the business where they could add more value. And they tied up excessive amount of times trying to improve the system, trying to make reports, and really trying to transition from those printed and Excel files into this, this database. So it did have reporting capabilities, but it took a long time for them to, to, to load. It was, it was more real time, but it wasn't fully real time. And the impact ultimately, like I said, was, was tying up our technical resources that no longer could support other parts of the business. Yeah, it sounds like that staff need was really what helped you decide that you were looking, looking outside now for a solution. How did you identify potential vendors for that solution, and what process did you follow in making a selection? We um, kind of started down the process. We created a team. As a part of that team, we had operations people, we had PLC technicians, we had some engineering and IT resources all that came together, and we identified our needs and what we wanted to get out of the process. Instead of having solution vendors come to us and tell us what we needed as a, as a manufacturer, once we came, when came to those criteria, we narrowed it down. We had six vendors early on, and we had each of them give us a one-hour presentation of, of the capabilities of their software. And it came down to a couple of different, some of the more important things for us were a cultural fit. We were a very strong, collaborative culture. Uh, we wanted to be able to have that in a solution provider. We wanted automatic data collection, obviously, and we wanted to be able to easily inter interface with our existing software. Cost was also a factor. Ease of reporting, being able to get down into the, the data and drill down using kind of the 5 Y methodology. We also wanted capabilities to SPC chart, and we wanted to be able to support it some internally, but also have experts outside that we could you know, call on to be able to support the system at kind of a more macro level. So after that process, we sent that criteria to those vendors and we had them present and scored each vendor after their presentation based on those criteria. And what did you decide? How did you choose Traxxas? Well, it really came down to a couple of the, the bigger things for us. We knew that the cultural fit was going to be there with Traxxas. Parsec we had, a, we had a good relationship with um, you guys already from our previous discussions and just knew that you would fit right in. It was easily adaptable to our environment uh, and easily configured. You also had people that were able to support us and continue to support us throughout our existence as a, as a company. We had customization, be able to do some things differently that really just set you guys apart from any other uh, vendor that we were looking at. Wonderful. Thank you for your feedback. Dave, do you have any comments or thoughts around that as well? Uh, just that it, in terms of being involved from the supplier side and that evaluation process they went through, we also definitely saw a cultural fit as far as the collaborative effort that, that Travis had talked about. And as a supplier, we actually saw that in meetings as uh, they responded to presentations, asked some very specific questions, and even would discuss some things amongst themselves. What really helped us as a supplier, and I think it, sometimes it gets lost, is Bush Brothers went through and really did think out what they needed from the system. It made it very easy as a supplier to come in and present right on point to what they needed. We knew what were the difference makers for them in a solution. We knew which capabilities they really needed to be able to see and uh, be able to go in and show those things definitively. Certainly helped us uh, be able to go in there and really truly show them that Traxxas was going to be able to satisfy both their near-term and potential long-term requirements for a solution. Thank you. Mike, let's uh, get your perspective on a, on a question for capability maturity for a moment. Can you share how it helps to foster goal setting and benchmarking? Well, certainly. Um, I think the uh, most important thing that it does is it fosters internal communications first within specific teams and then across departmental boundaries. Travis has already mentioned working with cross-functional teams and setting expectations. And it's critically important to have department heads and company leadership involved. And, and that's because although systems are often acquired by a particular department to meet their needs, the production workflows and the implications of work done in one area of the plant certainly span across departmental boundaries. So a system in one department might implicate another group 
let's say machines are starved for parts or ingredients or they're down too long waiting for maintenance as examples. And that can cause frictions if the other group feel like they're being scapegoated in morning production meetings. So leadership teams are going to have to be involved and they're going to have to work through these challenges and keep their teams working together. But when you have a shared vision with your leaders of where you want to go and a true understanding of where you are in your maturity, uh, then you can work through issues like this and, and get the team where they want to go. Absolutely. And Travis, I'd love to get your perspective again. You talked a little bit about how you determine the scope and requirements and probably a little bit about how you refine those as well. I'm curious, did the solution itself deliver what the team was hoping to see operationally for the goals at the company? It, it did. We, uh, we kind of started out small. We did it one line at a time and made sure that the accuracy of the uh, Traxxas system was going to be just as accurate as what we had we had implemented in our homegrown system. So we ran both both systems kind of side by side. Uh, and we found that there was definitely an outperformance of the homegrown system by Traxxas. Traxxas was much more accurate and just gave us more insight into kind of how that was implemented and, and to insight into the, the downtime caused on the line. There were big changes for us as we started to use it. That year we actually produced about 2.2 million more cases with less in less time than we did the previous year company-wide. And we had better order fulfillment for our customers. Our first pass quality here at the Augusta facility was higher than it had been at about 96%. Our efficiencies were higher in Augusta than they had been and actually achieved uh, efficiencies up around 85.5%. And we produced exactly what we said we were going to be producing about 97% of the time. So it did. It, it gave us a lot of uh, ability to see kind of how we were how we were doing and kind of give us what we needed uh, to improve. That's a lot in a short time frame. Were those achievements repeatable? And if so, can you share how goals may have changed as you move forward with Traxxas? Uh, yes, they were. Um, there was a lot of changes and they were very repeatable with the reporting and the ability to drill down into the data like we had never experienced before gave us the ability to find the answers that we needed uh, and really do it in a lot less time than we had ever done that before. When we were before looking for data for days or weeks, we could go down and drill it down into the data that Traxxas was providing and find it in a couple of minutes. So we started very specific with Traxxas and really was just, like I said, a, sm a small portion of our business. But over time, we found that, that we could do the same thing over and over again uh, and really have, have continued to, to improve our efficiency since our first initial imp implementation and have grown it outside of that one line to multiple lines throughout the business. That's great, Travis. I appreciate your feedback on that. Dave, I'd love to hear from you. Was there anything in working with a project through with Bush Brothers uh, that you also saw them achieve that you think could be helpful to share? Just on that topic of repeatability and, and going back to coming up with the requirements and the scope for the project, um, certainly I think Bush Brothers was, was very, very smart in their approach of starting, we'll call it small, with a pilot and proving things out on a line. But even before they did that, they brought together relevant stakeholders from more than one facility to come up with a common framework for how do they want information to be collected? How do they want certain things to be displayed or reported or visualized or contextualized? Those meetings were actually fun in the sense that rather than Bush Brothers trying to be constrained by just a few basics of what the system could do, they learned and they found that with the flexibility that Traxxas provided, they actually could focus more on what they wanted out of a solution and in a sense, kind of standardize on that, which then led to going post-pilot and being able to repeat some things both within the same site, within multiple sites. It really set them up well for the journey that they started off on with Traxxas. That's wonderful feedback, Dave. Appreciate it. Travis, Dave, Mike, I want to thank you all for your time and your expertise and your experience here in our conversation today. That wraps up episode one of our Bush Brothers Traxxas success story. I want to thank everyone for participating, Mike, Dave, Travis. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us.